Come on and give the Lord your yeah. Oh. Yes to your way. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes, I'm afraid, Lord. Yes, I'm doubtful, Lord. Yes, Lord, I won't. Yes, Lord, have your way. It sounds so simple to say, but a yet would be so powerful in your life. Just surrender your will to God's will by simply saying, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Whatever you say, Lord. Yes, Lord. You may not understand it, but yes, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Yes, Lord, in my body. Yes, Lord, in my finances. Yes, Lord, in my health. Somebody give the Lord a yes. Hallelujah. I feel pretty good today because some time ago I said yes to the Lord and he brought me out of a state of death and brought me into a, an atmosphere of life. So yes, I'll praise him. Yes, I will glorify him. I don't care what's going on. The Lord will always get a yes from me. Lord, the Lord said, oh, I want you to go over here to preach. Yes, Lord. I want you to go over here to this person and share word. Yes, Lord. I want you to go to the hospital and put your hand. Yes, Lord. In the midst of COVID, yes, Lord. Yes, I'll do it. You know why? Because God has been good to me. God has loved me when I didn't know how to love myself. Anybody else got that testimony? God saved me when I was not all right, but I was a mess. That's when God stepped in and saved me. Does anybody else have that testimony? I, I, didn't, I, I said to myself at one point, when I get my life together, I'm going back to church. But God said, devil is a lie because you'll never make it in the door. So God loved me when I didn't even know I needed to be in church. The Lord changed my atmosphere. He changed my circumstances and forced me to say, yeah. Does anybody else have that testimony? It was forced out of me. I love living in sin, but the Lord forced me to say, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for new level, new devil. And new victories. Hallelujah. I left my phone somewhere. Somebody grabbed my phone. I'm forever forgetting stuff when I come up here. But that's all right. I got plenty of health in the building. Praise the Lord. I think I left it up there by the by the uh by the computers up there. But I thank God for this word on today. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. And anyone in the building that can stand, would you stand? And again, I'm so happy and thankful to see all of you with me on today. I'm inspired when I see people here. Amen. I'm, I'm motivated. You guys don't know what you do to an old man, you know? You just can't make my soul happy when I see y'all. Come on here. All right, look at the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you again for this opportunity to stand before your people and to deliver the word of God that you have given unto me. Lord, I ask that you would take Pastor Paul and move him to the side and let your word go forth, my God, with power, with clarity, with authority. Lord, it is our desire that someone that is worshiping with us today would be healed, delivered, set free from the bounds of sin, my God. Turn their life around even on the day, God, with a simple yes, Lord. Lord, have your way in this place. Let the Holy Ghost just move throughout every situation and every circumstance, my God. No matter what it is, remove all the fear, remove all the doubt, my God. Let us hear clearly a word from you on today as we discuss new levels, new devils, and new victories. For this, God, we'll continue to give you glory. Honor and praise. It's all belongs to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. And amen. Now, if you have your Bibles, where are you? Be in church. Y'all know what to bring when you go to the beach. You got your towel, you got your suntan lotion. You know exactly what to bring. 
So I hope that you brought your Bible today because we in the church today where you need, you need your Bible every day, but especially you need it here. Uh, amen. As we make our declaration statement on today, please hold your Bible up in front of you. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a hand to raise in this house for that declaration. If you believe in that, come on and tell him, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I will never be the same because of your word. Your word is just through bone and marrow. Your word that changes the way I look and the way I feel and how I react. It is your word that moves and convicts. I thank God for the word all day. I've already announced our title, our thought, our theme for today, New Level. Y'all with me? New Devil and New Victory. A long time ago, not that long ago, but Mother Elizabeth Hornback, some of you remember her, some of you don't. She used to say to me, uh, the late Mother Hornback, used to say, Lord, take me higher. What does she mean by that at the moment? Well, it means different things for different people, but it could say, Lord, take me from the bottom and take me to the top. Lord, let the, change me from a borrower to a, a lender. Lord, do something in my life where I'm no longer headed in a destructive manner. The Lord bless me in such a way where I can be productive. Hallelujah. Instead of destructive. In other words, Lord, take me from the unrecognizable to the recognizable. Oh, let my light so shine before men and that they will glorify the Father that is within me. Lord, take me higher. I think everyone in the audience and in the viewing audience can agree with that statement. You can put in however you want to put in, but the Lord, everybody has that desire for the Lord to take you higher. Hallelujah. In other words, as, as, as I reach new levels, prepare me to battle new devils. Are y'all with me? The more we grow in Christ, our enemy tries even harder to stop that growth. Any, any, can I get a witness in here? Has anybody ever tried to live holy and, and the devil just went back every thing in your, from your past and just... Oh, you'll never be nothing. Oh, your mama said you wouldn't go be nothing. Your daddy said you can't break that generational curse. I don't know what gave you that idea. Am I talking to anybody? The more we are exposed to the enemy, the more we are exposed to, the enemy is trying to keep us blinded from what the Lord is revealing to us. I, I gave a message couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, that we ought to live for revelation instead of information. And as the Lord reveals things to us, the enemy's job is to try to keep us blinded from the things that we used to do. But as God opens doors and reveals things to us, instead of embracing the direction that the Lord is sending us in, we oftentimes, because the enemy is trying to influence us, run away. From what the Lord is revealing to us. Come on, give God praise if that's talking to anybody. Everyone is familiar with this. I'm going to go at this a different way. I may not, may not grasp everybody this way. So I'm going to go at this a different 
Right. Now, is everybody familiar with the term bullying? Everybody's heard that term? Bullying before. Bullies always pick on people that they think are weak or timid. Am I right about it? I, I've, I've been both. I admit it. I've been a bully. And I've been bullied. So I understand it from both sides. Of I'm just, I'm talking about y'all so I don't get in trouble with, yeah, I'm talking about me so I don't get in trouble with y'all. Amen. But I've been a bully and I've also been in a position of being bullied. I was bullied when I was younger, turned into a bully later. All right, all right, that's enough about me. All right, I want you to get the wrong idea. I'm saying sanctified filled with the Holy Ghost now, praise God. All right. But they always seem to pick on somebody that they think is weak or timid. The mistake that bullies make is thinking that the person that they are bullying will never change or grow. Did y'all catch that? Never grow a backbone or stand up to their bullying ways. Bullies do that. We, we, we've conquered. We, we think we own you. Hello? I, I own you. Have y'all heard uh, uh, what's the boy's quarterback's name when he plays Chicago? He always says, I own you because he's beat. Uh, what's his name? Uh, quarterback for Green Bay. You know his name? Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers says it all the time. I own Chicago. Why? Because I've beaten Chicago every time I come here. I own you. Bullies think the same way. I own you. Here's, here's, the, here's the reality, though. Uh, the reality is every time the person being bullied is confronted by the bully, they are saying inside of themselves. Can you imagine this? It's in your mental picture, right? You're the one being bullied, right? What they're saying inside of themselves is today is the day. This is the little person inside the little person. Are y'all with me? Today is the day. Today I'm going to defend myself. Today I'm going to stand up to this book. And when the and when that day and when they finally do it, when they finally stand up to the bully, this is what I've learned. You know, most of the time, the bully and the bullied become the best of friends. Am I right? Y'all think that through for a second. Most of the time, when you stand up for the bully, and the bully knows that he can no longer bully you. And you now know that you no longer have to live in fear of the bully. You become the best of friends. Isn't that right? The Lord gave me this thought as I was preparing this message. Shall I go up? Y'all read that? Come on. The Lord gave me that thought. Shall I go up? So, of course, I went to my Bible app. I prayed. The Lord sent me to the Bible app. Oh, that was funny. Y'all should have laughed at that one. All right. And put it in the search engine, and it took me to the passage of scripture that talks about King David's rise from shepherd level to king level. New levels, new devils, new victories. Are y'all with me here? And all the while the Lord was, oh, I'm sorry, from, from shepherd level to king level, and all the while the Lord was preparing David for the new levels. He was also protecting him from the new devils. Are y'all with me? All right. Now, if you have your Bibles with you, I'm going to give you a few scriptures. We're going to go through. I'm not going to bore you by reading all of them, but I encourage all of you to read them so you'll understand what I'm talking about. All right. They're all in First and Second Samuel. All right. We'll start at First, first Samuel uh, chapter 17. We're going to look at verses 33 through 36. First Samuel, I'm talking to my media team back there. First Samuel, chapter 17, verses 33 through 36. Still in the same chapter, we're going to cover it. I'm not going to read all of these, so don't get, don't get scared, all right? 40, verses 44 through 51, okay? Same, First Samuel 17, 33 through 36, and then 44 through 51. And if that wasn't enough, we're going to then move to Second Samuel. Chapter 2 and verse 1, only verse 1. Same chapter, looking at verses 5 through 17. No, I'm sorry, different chapter. Only in 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. Then we're going to go to 2 Samuel chapter 5. Verses 17 through 19, 
And then finally, oh my God, Pastor, so many verses. 22 through 25. The more I read of the Bible, the less I have to talk. Amen. So I love the Bible. All right. Did we get all of those? I'll go through them one more time. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 33 through 36. Same chapter, verses 44 through 51. Then moving over into 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. And then we'll go down to chapter 5, verse 17 through 19, and verse 22 through 25. I love talking about David because David's life is complicated. Anybody else got a complicated life? Come on, somebody. Everybody wished it was so easy. Just lay it out for me, Lord, so I can just walk on into victory. But life is messy. Life is complicated. We make mistakes as we strive for things that we want that God said, no, you can't have that. We, as we run away from the things that God wants us to do, it gets messy. I love talking about David. Samantha and I love talking about David. Samantha's favorite speech or message is David and Goliath. Amen. That's her favorite speech. So if we pick up our passage of scripture in 1 Samuel in chapter, verse chapter, chapter 17, looking at verses 33 through 36. David is having a conversation with King Saul. Now, that's a complicated relationship between David and King Saul. I don't have time to go through all of that. But you should know that Saul was trying to kill David because he was jealous and all this so forth. I ain't got time to go through all that. But please read it for yourself. But David is having a conversation with King Saul about how the Lord prepared his this young shepherd boy to go to the next level by using him to slay a lion and a bear while tending to the sheep. I hope y'all caught all that. This is a shepherd boy who's out there with a staff. He doesn't have a sword. He doesn't have a shield. He doesn't have the proper footing. And he is ill-prepared as a young person tending the sheep. He's got to fight a lion and a bear. Now, you would think that things that are happening in your life right now are not preparing you to go to the next level. I would strongly disagree. Every trial, every test, every challenge, every struggle that we're going through in this present day is preparing you to take it to the next level level. Saul disagrees if you're reading in verse 33. Saul says you are ill prepared for this battle. You are ill equipped. And he lets him know, no, no, no. I'm perfectly in line with what the Lord has been doing in my life all along for take this next level. The Lord would not have sent me a lion and a bear and allowed me to slay them if he didn't tell me this next level is for you. I have this giant that everybody else is running away from. But I challenge you to slay a lion and a bear as a young boy. Showing you that the power is not in your hands or in your might. But the power is in your belief and in your commitment to do the task that the Lord has assigned you to do. You stay steadfast in being a shepherd. And I will supply the power and the authority and the might and the strength and the know-how for you to slay lions and bears. I hope y'all are with me. I don't want to lose nobody. All right? That's what we get there. That little argument. Saul had no belief that David would gain victory in the new level. But God was protecting David as he faced new devils. We go over to verses 44 through 51, and that is a conversation, or that is a focus of the battle itself. Are y'all with me here? That is Samantha's favorite passage of scripture. Chapter 17, verses 44 through 51. We read of David's confidence in the Lord's preparation of him to face this new level of devil. 
And we read about the victory achieved by David over Goliath because he used what the Lord gave him to use. Goliath called David out in verse 44. He says, and the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. David said, oh, no, no, it's not going down like that. It's not going down like that. The Lord has prepared me to take you out. The Lord has put me here, sent me here to take you out, not by power, not by might, but by my faith in the Lord that he would not have taken me to this next level if he wasn't going to protect me from the next devil. I understand that victory, you think you have it in, in, in hand, but I tell you this day, victory is mine, saith the Lord. If we looked at our situations and circumstance in a similar fashion, we would move forward with confidence and not fear and reluctancy. I assure you, victory is yours. Step out on faith. Test the Lord. See, won't he be there when you call on his mighty name? When you step to the next level with the understanding, I'm going to face new devils. But God says, you've got the victory because I prepared you. For this next level. Are y'all with me here? Therefore David ran. At the end of it here. David prevailed. It said in, in verse 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine. With a sling. And with a stone. Not with a sword. Not with a shield. Not with armor. But what he had. What the Lord had already given him to use. Don't you know you already have enough within you to go to the next level? Some people say, well, I don't have the finances. You have it. If the Lord sends you to the next level, the money is coming. The cooperation is coming. The unity is coming. Do y'all believe what I'm saying? The next level that you were so afraid to go to, God says, I've already prepared the way for you. Take the next level. Yes, you're going to face new devils, but I am the Lord God. I am with you. If the Lord be for you, who can be against you? New victories are found on new levels where you conquer new devils. Now, David's story doesn't end there. I wish it did. Y'all were already telling me, oh, go on, move on, Pastor. Sit down now. You're done. You're preaching already. Moving forward, David is yet again taken to a new level. When he is told of the death of King Saul, and from his personal experience with the Lord, he asked the Lord in 2 Samuel 2 and 1, shall I go up? Now, I understand where David has come from. David has gained victory over Goliath by the power of the Lord that was with him. So now David is on a new level. He's without his king. He's not yet the king, but the king was like a safety blanket for David. Now, David was gaining popularity, no doubt, but Saul was still the king. David still had a cover, but now the cover's been ripped off. Does anybody understand what I'm talking about? Right? It get cold when you rip the covers off. I got up this morning or something, ripped the covers off. I said, oh my God, it's cold. It's cold when, it, when, when your safety net is removed and the responsibility becomes yours. It, it, it gets a little, a little scary at the top. Amen? So it's wise to consult the Lord when you reach new levels. After all, you've never been here before. Even though the Lord has prepared for you to get here and for you to be here, you still have that question in your head. I've never been here before. I don't know how to operate on this new level. Are y'all with me? I, I wasn't afraid to go. The Lord forced my yes by killing King Saul. I hope y'all caught that. The Lord forced my yes, but now I'm here. And I don't know what to do. So he says, shall I go up? In this verse, we see David asking for two things. Permission and direction. Y'all write that down. 
He asks for permission and direction. When the Lord moves you to a new level, remember you haven't been here before, so you don't really know how to function in this new level, but the Lord does. Hello, somebody. After all, he wouldn't have brought you to this level if he didn't intend on using you on this level. So it is wise to ask the Lord for those two things, permission and direction. When he takes uh, you to the next level, the Lord directs David also in these two and one to Hebron. All right? Because he asked him, where should I go? Am I going up into Judah? Where should I go there? Right? He says, go to Hebron. Where a lot happens to him while he's in Hebron. It's a whole lot. And I know you guys would be so bored if I went through all of that. But a lot, take my word for it, a lot of things happen to him while he's there. But the end result is David is made king over all Israel simply by following the direction that the Lord told him to follow. Are y'all with me here? Sometimes it's good to say, yes, Lord, I'll go in the direction you want me to go. I don't know what's in Hebron. I've never been to Hebron before. I don't know what awaits me in Hebron. I don't know what my future looks like. I'm not king when I go to Hebron. I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm saying, Lord, shall I go? I'm asking for permission to go. And he says, yes, go. Go to Hebron. I got something in Hebron for you. Don't ask him all the questions before he provides the answers. Just go. Go to Hebron. He ends up being the king of all Israel by the time we reach chapter 5. See how I'm moving through this pretty quickly? You thought it was going to be boring, did you? Again, we're talking about new levels, new devils, and new victories. In 2 Samuel, all the way down in chapter 3, Five, and we are almost done, believe it or not. I intend to go home and watch football just like the rest of you. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 17 through 19, David, now as king of Israel, new level, new devil, new victories. He's no longer a shepherd. His shepherd days are gone. He's no longer out there killing lions and bears. He's got many people. Under his authority. His level of responsibility has now changed. He is no longer in it for himself. To prove to himself that God is with him. No, he's got to prove it to the entire nation of Israel. Hello, somebody. Things change. Gets a little lonely on the top. When you got nowhere else to hide, it gets a little lonely on the top. So David now is known as the king of Israel. Ask the Lord again. Shall I go up? I started to name this. Shall I go up? <laughs> I said new level. <laughs> new devil. And new victory sounded so much cooler. All right. <laughs> Just being real. But he asked. This question kept popping up. Shall I go up? He asked now. Not as a shepherd. Not as a potential uh, up-and-comer, but now as the king. The, the, the person who's supposed to be in charge. The person who's supposed to have it all together. Have all the answers. He's the king. He determines the taxes and who does what and who has what. How much he gets. Y'all get the picture? He's the boss. I don't know what you call it in corporate world. CEO, CFO, whatever you call it. But he the boss. He the owner of the thing. All right? And he asked the Lord again, shall I go up? Are y'all with me here? This time he's asking for three things. See how this goes? Every level you go to, you got to have a deeper relationship with the Lord. Every next level that the Lord takes you to. You'll see this here in just a second. This time he's asking for three things. Permission, direction, and protection. Did y'all get that? 
as the king. He's asking the Lord, shall I go up? He's looking for permission, direction, and protection. Because this same enemy that he conquered when he killed Goliath way back when, these Philistines are back. And they don't like the fact that David is the king of Israel. They don't like it at all. Y'all ever had some haters that just didn't like nothing? I mean, they want to attack you. They want to knock you down from your pedestal. Come on, somebody. New level, new devil. Don't ever get a promotion on your job because everybody that you used to work with, they hate you. Hello, somebody. Why they promote him? He ain't got nothing no special. I remember I saved his job one time. Are y'all with me here? New level. New devil. New victories. Are you starting to get the point of this message? I hope you are. As the Lord moves you to new levels, you are going to need the Lord even more to help you defeat new devils. Come on here. By the time we reach our final scripture of this message, 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 22 through 25. Are y'all with me? We see David's question now has evolved to seeking. And the question again is, shall I go up? Are y'all with me? Oh, I, I thought, I'm not losing nobody. Okay. He, it's evolved to asking for permission. We got that. Direction. We got that. Protection. We got that. And lastly, strategy. Did y'all catch that? That same question, shall I go up, has now evolved as the next levels are reached. It gets deeper. And deeper as our relationship with the Lord should get deeper and deeper, right? As we go to the next level, which we have determined from the beginning of this message, everybody desires. Nobody wants to stay on the bottom. Everybody wants to go to the top. But as you rise, understand haters are coming. New devils are forming. Nobody wants to see you victorious. But God says, I'm not going to, I haven't put you in this position so you can fail. I put you in this position to win. Not for your glory, but for my glory. Because as our relationship deepens with the Lord, we see our dependency on the Lord as we rise. In the Lord. That's why some of the greatest leaders that you've ever met are the greatest followers that you'll ever meet. Because they understand it's not in get here on my own. The Lord brought me here. And not only has he brought me here, but he's protected me while I am here. He's guaranteeing me victory over the devils that are present on this level, but he's not done elevating me. As I'm not going to continue in this story because I don't want to put everybody to sleep. But, devil, the, but David is not stuck growing at this point. David's not yet more to do. But David has developed this relationship and this understanding that as I rise, I need the Lord more and more. Let me sum it up this way and I'm done. The Lord has saw fit to bring us all into this new year for a reason. Somebody give God a hand, please. I know that a lot of us know people that were seemingly healthy and fine. And they're not here in 2023. I think if we don't do nothing else, we ought to celebrate God just for making it to 2023. Just give him praise and say thank you Lord for letting me see 2023. I thank you Lord for just blessing me to be here. 
What that, that, Lord, you have my yes because you have saved me to get to 2023. Lord, I don't know what you want to do with me in 2023, but I ha you have my yes because I'm here now. I, I know you wouldn't have brought me to this level. I know you wouldn't have granted me favor to make it into 2023 if you didn't have intention to do something with me in 2023. Lord, I say yes to your direction. I say yes for what you want me to do. Lord, I will give you my yes on the new level because I'm protected from the new devil that we find in 2023. Their names are variances. But every variance that is produced, the Lord shall protect me from it. Not only has he brought me into 2023, but he's assured me that I have victory in the area that he wants me to go in. No matter what area that is, whether that's ministering on the street, whether that's feeding the homeless, whether that's starting a new ministry, wherever that's going to a new place, I'm thankful for 2023. We have been prepared already for this new level. We have already been prepared for this new level. Think about what the Lord has done for you in the last two years. How he has kept you from being financially born. Oh, somebody ought to give him a prayer. How he has kept you from a hospital and a ventilator. Come on, somebody ought to give him a praise. How he's kept your car on the road when all the businesses were closed. Come on and give God a praise. When I think about all the things that the Lord has done for me, my soul cries out, thank God for saving me. When I think about all that I've been through, I watched my friends die. I watched my family members die. But the Lord said, not today. I got something I want you to do and 2023. Leave your fears behind. Leave your reservations behind. Understand that I brought you this far not to just leave you, but I want to use you. And in order for me to use you, I need to hear your yes. So now let us consult the Lord for permission. Shall I do what it is? I've never existed on this level before. Lord, do I have your permission to go forth in this area? If the Lord said no, or if the Lord say wait, say yes, Lord. If the Lord said go, go where the Lord wants you to go. I don't know what's in 2023. I'm not a prophet, but I am aware that I made it. I am aware that the Lord wants to do something here at St. Paul. I am aware that the Lord wants us to bless our young people, to educate our young people, because the Lord has directed me to go that way. I don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea, but I will say yes. I will say yes. I will say yes. Yes, I will teach the young people. Yes, I will spend time with the young people. Yes, I will educate the young people. Yes, I will love on them. Yes, I will do whatever I can to protect them. Yes, I will do it. Hallelujah. Protection and strategy. This is what we need to consult the Lord about in this next week of consecration. As we seek the Lord's direction. Lord, protect us from danger seen and unseen. Give us the strategy on how to operate on this level. Things that we've learned in our past, some things we will repeat. Some things are needed for this next level. Other things are not. So we have to learn how to decipher what is needed and what is not. You can't move forward carrying baggage. He, my God. You cannot go to the next level bringing all the stuff that was holding you down with you. Somebody, some, you got to drop some of them Louis Vuitton bags off. Uh -huh, I said, I know I struck a nerve right there. Louis Vuitton bag cost me $15,000. What are you talking about leaving behind? The Lord said, I got more for you if you leave it. 
Hello, somebody. Seeking him for permission, direction, protection, and strategy in order to obtain a, what? Victory over the new devils that exist on this new level. Come on, give God a praise. Thank God for his word. Oh, today, this being year 2023, some of you may be worshiping with us that don't know the Lord as for yourself, that don't know how good the Lord is, how sweet he is, how loving he is. Some of you may not even know his word. I encourage you, 2023, to give God your yes. Don't ask him all the questions because you got a million of them. I did. Just say yes, and he will open doors for you. He will lead and guide you to where he wants you to go. But in order to do that, you first have to have a relationship with him. How do I do that, Pastor? Simple. Pray. If you are new to this way of thinking, this idea of life, let me encourage you to pray this prayer with me. Lord, I am a sinner. Today, I decide to surrender my will to your will. I make you the head of my life. Forgive me for my sins. Strengthen me where I'm weak. And I'll serve you for life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, maybe you know the Lord, and you kind of slipped off. Happens. Happens a lot, if we're honest, right? We're working, we're doing all we can do. And something happens, triggers, and a little switch. We revert. I know I'm talking about it to somebody. The Lord just says simply, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm still right here. I'm still watching over you. I'm still comforting you. I'm still keeping you. I'm still close to you. Just turn. Just turn from your wicked ways, and you'll see my face. My arms are still wide open. He wants you to come back to him. Today is your day, your opportunity to do that. Say, so just, Lord, forgive me, and welcome me back into the fold. He will do it. It's done already. We claim it here it's victory already over what the enemy was trying to do in your life. We thank God for this word. We thank God for every participant on today. I thank God for the choir. I thank God for um, every song that was sung, every testimony that was given, um, every uh, scripture that was read, every prayer that was prayed. I thank you most of all for all of you being with us, worshiping with us on today. If I haven't forgotten anything, First Lady, have I forgotten anything? Again, I'll remind you. It's coming Thursday. Invite, invite, invite. We're looking for our target audience is people who are starting out financially. So our older teenagers, our younger adults, that's the target group that we're looking to communicate with on Thursday at 7 p.m. We'll send out, no, actually we will be on Facebook and YouTube. So just look up on your, in your phone. Saints Home Church, Los Angeles. You'll find us there. Like it. Like the page. Love the page. It's really easy to do. Everybody who's born with a phone in your hand knows how to do it already. Right? So just like the page. Follow us Thursday, this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. Sister Grimes has a very great outline. Sister Grimes is, is not a certified public accountant, but she might as well be. Amen. The only thing she's missing is the paperwork. That's it. So she knows what she's talking about, and the goal of it is not to treat money as a god, but as a tool. Did y'all catch that? Money is not our god, but it is our tool. We want to educate you on Thursday night, so join us, Facebook, YouTube, on Thursday night. If nothing further, let's all stand. We can be dismissed. Thank you again for worshiping with us on today. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to minister to those, to witness to those, to testify to those on today. We are so grateful for your word on today. We pray that it was well received to the person that you intended it to be received 
by. Now, Lord, as we leave this place, but never your presence, we ask that you would cover us and keep us. Protect us from danger seen and unseen. Give us traveling mercies and grace. And bring us back together again at the end, at the appropriate time. This truly is our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. What I say unto one, I say unto all, watch, pray, live holy every day. God bless you. You are dismissed.